Hello there, my name is John Shepherd from Hemsley Fraser uh, and today we're going to be talking about designing hybrid learning. Uh, hybrid working is a really hot topic right now but very little is being said about hybrid learning and so I'm joined by Eleanor and Rita. Eleanor Hudgel is a lead designer working with us at Hemsley Fraser. Rita Sukrit is the solutions architect and Canada lead from Hemsley Fraser. Both have a vast amount of experience working with clients, designing, learning in all formats. They're both going to help us understand what hybrid learning is and share their top insights about successful hybrid learning design. So, Eleanor, if I could come to you first, um, just to start with your understanding and clarifying what hybrid learning is and how it is different from face to face or virtual learning. Oh, yeah, thanks, John. Um, yeah, as you just said, I think hybrid working is the hottest of all hot topics right now, isn't it? You know, I don't think I've ever known such a burning issue that's on everybody's lips at the moment in every conversation I'm having with clients. So super, super interesting. And there's, you know, lots of research being done around, you know, the hybrid workplace, how to make that work. And so now from an L&D point of view, we're evolving that conversation to consider what that means for us um, when we're creating and designing learning experiences. So, you know, obviously at its most basic kind of level, it's a, it's a mix between people being in person in a room together, physically located together, and other people attending a, a training event remotely. Um, but I think it's more than just that kind of middle ground between the two, it's actually a thing in itself that requires careful consideration and curation and design to make it work and to create that kind of level playing field for everybody. And I feel like if we can do that well, then it's got the potential to actually make a, a better and you know more impactful and more interactive experience than purely in-person and purely virtual. I think it also gives us an opportunity to think more deeply about how to use the blend and how we're going to kind of front load and back, back load rather the actual event itself and perhaps have less focus on the physical kind of synchronous event um, and pay more attention to what goes around that event and how we can incorporate incorporate kind of asynchronous activities and discussions and, and learning points um, that kind of um, add that foundation to when people actually come together. So I think it's a really exciting prospect. Um, and I think that it's a conversation that we're only just starting to have across the L&D world. So there's lots of kind of potential there for us all to, you know, figure it out, try things out and experiment using the different technologies that we've come to use over the last couple of years when we've been, you know, the default has been virtual, hasn't it? We've moved from in-person being the default for most things to virtual being the default in most cases. So now it's like, what can we use in terms of our experiences and our knowledge and understanding from those two worlds and actually take the best out of both but create a new kind of experience? That's great. Thanks, Eleanor. Rita, anything to add to that? Any any different perspectives? I Yes, I would. And, and I think Eleanor had a lot of key points that really resonate with me as well. The fact that she just talked about the work and the learning and tying the two together, because that's the hybrid. Just note that, you know, hybrid came about because of the pandemic. We were forced to move from our, our what we knew in the workplace and onto the home, and people took courses and training converted it and said, okay, this is how you start to learn. So it was a learning process that came out of this disruption. And now what we have to do is figure out how do we make it work? So for me, the terms blended and hybrid are used interchangeably, but there is a difference and Eleanor tapped in on it. It's a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning. Blended is you either do face-to-face -face or you do self-directed learning or you do e-learning. But in hybrid, it's truly blending both synchronous and asynchronous learning. And if we can figure that out, we, we are going to be, you know, this is the future of work for us. Perfect. Yeah. Rita, could Amen. I stay, stay with you just to talk about, you said there, you know, figuring it out. What do you see as the main challenges uh, that we face in oh. designing hybrid learning? Yes, uh, you know, with challenge, let's just start with the positive because, you know, there's always a good and a bad, a yes and a no, the yin and the yang. The benefit is, you know what, hybrid gives people another variety means to learn. So the blended, the e-learning, so let's just put that, that's, that's a positive out there. This is just another way people can learn. But what we need to do is figure out how to do it. So we don't implement 
we're not implementing hybrid in its true sense. And Eleanor talked about that before. It's like, where, where does it differ? You know, blended is, is not hybrid, hybrid is not blending. There's a clear differentiation between the two. What my concerns or what challenges would be is, you know, are L&D people really skilled today? Because this is so new to design for hybrid, yeah. right? Hybrid is, it's, it's learning in the flow work. It's, it's just in time. What we're trying to do is move away from that content heavy type of design and bring it into context. So I just need the context, you know, give me what I need to do my job. And l and people may not be skilled right now to do this. And in our, in what, what I'm also thinking about is what we need is l and people to be the voice and start influencing companies and leadership and management is saying, this is, this is going to, this is going to here to stay. We need to figure this out and really, really, you know, hone this skill down. And lastly, I would say is we have tons of resources in l and We've got e-learning videos, job aids, quick reference, you name it, we've got it. So how do we take all that information and turn it into this hybrid model that we're seeking? That's what I would say some of the challenges are for me right now. Thanks, Rita. Eleanor, similar challenges or other yeah, factors? Yeah, no, I agree. About? And I think what Rita was saying about upskilling is really, really key. So I think we've talked a lot about upskilling people to work in a hybrid environment and the different kind of skills that actually people need to develop to be successful in a hybrid workplace. And now we need to think about that from an L&D perspective. So as L&D professionals, how do we need to, to switch up how we approach um, the learning that we design and deliver? to make it successful and make it work in that kind of hybrid working environment. So, you know, it's a learning process for all of us, which is super exciting, I think. Um, but yeah, the challenge is there in that we need to kind of go back to basics, I think, really, and think very carefully about what we're delivering and how we're going to get our learning objectives across to our learners in a way that is accessible, that is relevant, that is just in time, that is, you know, that integrates, you know, the people that, who are in a co-location and people who are dispersed and remote so yeah quite a few challenges but I think they're quite quite exciting ones and interestingly actually I think with hybrid learning is that you know for most of us in business it's quite a new concept but actually education institutions have been doing this for quite some time so it's quite interesting to see what lessons we can learn there from higher education universities and colleges where um, they've been delivering lectures and and you know whole degree courses in a hybrid fashion so I think um, it's useful for us to look to look to that example and see what what kind of tips and tools and techniques we can pick up in terms of technology in terms of design in terms of facilitation. Mm -hmm. uh, John? Yeah. Sorry. That's so spot on Eleanor you know we have had we've always kept academia separate from corporate you know I don't know why. I think we should have had a stronger bridge. And you're so right about it. Hi they've been using hybrid forever. When I did my master's degree in Toronto here, that's exactly the format that we used for me because I was working in Europe. And we've missed that mark. And I think we need to have more collaboration between everyone. When I think about it, right, we, we reference pedagogical, but we're not talking about pedagogy anymore. We're gone, we've gone beyond that because in the workplace, there are nine nine different um, generations and hybrid is going to help us you know we've gone from pedagogy to andragogy to hutagogy and now they're talking about garagogy because we've got people that are in that generation that are still working and hybrid will accommodate all these different pockets really so that was that's yeah. key I, I i absolutely agree with you on that 100 mm percent -hmm. Yeah, and I think it, it is it will enable us to break down those kind of barriers, won't it? Whether that's between generations, between geographies, you know, um, you know, physical barriers and all of that. It it does enable that kind of like broad, wide, diverse perspective on learning where everyone's got an opportunity to get involved and it gives mm -hmm. people more opportunities to collaborate, you know, across mm -hmm. what might have been traditionally boundaries. We can break down a lot of those boundaries, I think, by working mm -hmm. in this way. Mm -hmm. And does that, Eleanor, um, as well as all the other things that, you know, hybrid working is constantly evolving, does that mean that the hybrid learning is, there isn't going to be, you know, an end point where we've suddenly solved it, it's going to be constantly yeah. changing, constantly evolving? Yeah, I think so, absolutely. And I think technology plays a big part in that. 
um, because so much of what this is going to look like is going to be enabled and supported by technology. Mm. So as technology advances, changes and evolves, then that will allow mm. us to do more and to do things slightly differently. So I think, you know, my message would be give it a go, try it out and, yeah. you know, seek feedback, review, evolve, be open, be prepared to change, try out different tools. There's so many incredible online collaboration tools now that you can make use of. And even the basic ones, you know, like, you know, WhatsApp that we all use. Now, how can actually bring that to create communities of learning where people can just, um, you know, share knowledge, share information, share experiences? people recording little videos on their phones and sharing those this is what i did today this is what happened this is a problem that i encountered and this is what i what i did about it what do you guys think and you know just creating that real kind of immersive community experience so so yeah i think we need to try things out we need to just give it a go prepare yeah. to experiment not everything is going to work for everybody um yeah. but let's just try things out and, and see where that takes us it's also weird you're so right we're in this still in this change you know we haven't figured out we're in that messy stage where it's still forming and but what we need to do absolutely right on we need to create that approach that's convenient that's efficient and that's cost effective especially for companies that are watching the almighty dollar so absolutely true but this messy stage is really exciting <laughs> You know, yeah. I, I can't, isn't it? I mean, we're in R&D and this is, you know, this is what we do. This is our profession, right? And we are excited by this, this, what, how do we figure this out? And that's the challenge. And I think, you know, when, when I said earlier, one of the challenges, we really need the right L&D people with the right, you know, skill sets, because it's skill, mind, and tool sets. Exactly what Ellen and I just said. I completely agree with you. Mm. And Eleanor, if I could just come back to you with, um, you, you started to talk about some of them there, but are, are any other practical tips above and beyond that that you think we could sort of tell people yeah. as a way to get started on this process? Yeah, sure. There's a lot of super, super practical considerations, I think, you know, as I said earlier, I think we need to really go back to basics in terms of, you know, what will the room look like? You know, how are we going to get these learning objectives across to people who are in different environments and you know, to people who are physically together and people who are remote. So we need to go back and think about how we design each interactivity, each discussion, each exercise to incorporate, you know, all the different kind of needs that people will have depending on, on where they are. So I think, again, that's quite exciting. So, yeah, first is how we use technology. How do we set up the environment? Thinking about what people can see, what people can hear. How do we make sure that the remote people can see and hear everything that's happening in the room, whether that's writing on a whiteboard or a flip chart or different people presenting. So that is the first thing, really, in terms of considerations is having a space that really genuinely works. You know, if you've got a facilitator, why is that person going to stand so that everyone can see and they can see everybody and involve people in interactions? So there's that aspect of it. And then in terms of the actual design of your learning, you know, I think we need to think about perhaps not making, um, not trying to do too much in too short a time because it is more complex. Um, try not to keep people, you know, engaged for too long, have regular breaks, perhaps make sessions shorter because it is fatiguing. And we are asking more of people, I think, in that kind of environment because there's so much more to consider. Um, you know, devices, you know, everyone certainly needs to have at least one device, if not perhaps several devices. Or I mentioned you might be having a back channel chat on WhatsApp and you might be recording something and you might be, collaborating with a google document or a shared wiki or something like that with people who are both beside you and in a, perhaps in a different country so it's how we're going to get those objectives across how would how do we design and configure each activity to take account of that and then it's how we're going to facilitate it in the room you know so thinking about i think we've all become used to in a virtual class from having a producer who is like a stage manager in the background that kind of looks after technology and you know sets all of your exercises up and and does all the technical stuff in the background so perhaps still using a producer um, when you're designing a hybrid event as well and what will that person do what's their role going to be how can they add value to the session and make sure that we have that level playing field for everybody so that nobody is inconvenienced and everybody is kind of integrated and it feels smooth and seamless for everybody regardless of where they are and how they're accessing that learning. Perfect. Rita, anything to add to that? In terms yes. Of practical tips to I, consider? 
I always have something to say. <laughs> and I want to just piggyback onto Eleanor and talk about the L&D side because she really talked about the learning side. I think us as professionals in this L&D realm, we really need to consider the theories and the, the methodologies we've been using. So things like Addy and they are not going to work in this. That is just too linear, too outdated, too archaic. We need modern new methodologies. And if we have to come up with them, then so be it. You know, this is this is how we're going to make this change work. Um, too many of us are stuck in the past, and that's because they really don't haven't moved through the evolution. Our companies are still refusing to jump on this bandwagon and realize that we've been in a pandemic and when we get out of this, truly get out of this, there's a short window of opportunity before people roll back to the comfortable way of doing things. And we should not and cannot and not allow that to happen. So we really need to come up with some new methodologies, theories, you know, mindsets and how we design hybrid. And hybrid is truly for the learner. Let the learner, it's self-determined learning, not self-directed. It's in the flow of work just in time context driven so that's what we really need to focus on perfect and final question to you both i'll come to you first eleanor um just to you both already sort of explained how excited you are as l d professionals about this development uh could you just give a little call to action a pep talk if you like so to learning and development professionals facing this issue what would be your sort of motivational speech as it were yeah, OK. Put me on the spot there. Thanks, John. Um, OK, I think I think as we've said, see it as an opportunity uh, and not a challenge. Try, be excited by it because it is, you know, it's not often that we get the opportunity to really mix things up and, and change. And, you know, I think we all need to be an active part of that change and, you know, get excited about it, get on board with it. Be prepared to experiment, be prepared to try things out, be prepared to throw out everything you thought you knew and kind of start again um and you know for us in terms of our own professional development in the L&D world that I think represents a great opportunity and for our learners as I said before in terms of just breaking down perhaps traditional boundaries and barriers that there might have been in the workplace I think you know it enables us to make learning truly global truly you know cross-generational cross-functional cross everything you know and just really create a level playing field where people can be included and people can be integrated and have the opportunity to collaborate with people that they may not otherwise have collaborated with so yeah using technology as the platform and the enabler for us to do that but not being bound by technology I think the sky is the limit so let's kind of open our minds up um, and give things a go and, and just kind of get out there and try it out and involve the learners in in shaping the experience as well so involve your people in you know what works and, and what what they need and be responsive to that that was th lots of lots of good motivational yeah. tips there Ella. <laughs> Rita anything anything to add yes and then take all the good stuff yeah I, you know for many years I never liked this saying think outside the box but it's all I can come up right now at right. you know five in the morning we really look get out of that comfort space, go to another corner in the box if you have to, if you can't get out of the box and it's a tidy, but we need to be more fluid in our in design, in our delivery. But what we really need to do is say when learning is not required. You know, we have to be strong enough and say that this is a solution that will work if we really stand up and, and speak the truth of L&D, learning and development. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. Lots to think about there and lots of inspiration. Thanks, Rita. Thanks, Eleanor. Thanks, John. Thank you.